Hello people, I'm Ginny Metherell and I'm a fourth generation witch. Today's video is all about a subject that is very close to my heart. It was one of the first videos that I ever did and I thought I'd revisit the subject because that was before I really knew how to hold a camera, speak, film or do anything on YouTube. It was literally, I think it was like video number three. So today's video we're going to look at ley lines. So of course, the question is, what is a ley line? There has been a lot written, recently especially, about ley lines. They were apparently were first written about by Alfred Watkins, but he just produced a treatise on what he saw as ley lines, and he thought that they were pathways, ancient pathways through which the Earth's magical power ran. Now, for those of us who have studied ley lines, and I understand ley lines to be a sort of river of Earth's magical power. Ley lines aren't therefore a static thing, like a road. They are as gently moving as a river does. A river flows and ebbs, it can go up and it can go down. Now we have lost the art of real knowledge about ley lines and this art was known almost from time immemorial. We, we lost the art of ley lines really around the first millennium. Scientists, archeologists, think that structures such as Stonehenge or stone circles and standing stones are simply religious structures or astronomical guides. It's so plainly obvious to anybody who's studied ley lines that in fact they are incredibly advanced technical structures that manipulate and use the Earth's magical pathways or magical energies. And it is astounding that so many of them tend to be by ley line intersections, where two ley lines intersect, if not more than two, like at Stonehenge, where I think there's about six, isn't there? I haven't counted them, I must do so. Stone circles and standing stones tend, but not always, to be made of stones which contain a high level of quartz. Now quartz is the mineral that you would use in a watch which vibrates at thousands of vibrations per second. Stone circles tend to have their stones made of um, something like granite, which is about 30-40% quartz makeup to it. And therefore there's a lot of speculation, and I personally believe this to be true, that those quartz stones are like electrical conductors of the magical pathways through which they're built around. I mean, why else would you use them? The individual standing stones, almost like needles. If you think like of an acupuncture needle being put into your body to activate the meridians in your body by that needle, that's exactly the same as a standing stone. And there are lots of stories about standing stones emitting electromagnetic, ultrasonic, and electrical energy. And this is not just, you know, by the by. It actually has been measured. Some people are much more sensitive to the energy of ley lines than others, and they can really feel the force fields. I'm quite sensitive to them. The reason I know that I'm sensitive to them is that my previous house was on a ley line cross. I found this out as soon as I started putting up my wards, as I do when I move to a new home, and uh, making sure that I'm protected, my family's protected, and etc., etc., which, if you want to learn, join Patreon because we're doing that this month. So do come and join our coven meeting. And whilst I was putting up the wards around this property, I discovered a massive magical energy crossing through it, which was slightly disturbing. It was actually in the kitchen in the northwest corner. And all my cakes <laughs> used to never ever cook in that kitchen. I think I might have made them quite sensitive to the magical energy that was passing through them at the time. And they all of them flopped. I could never make a cake. However, I could roast meat really well there. So I don't know, swings and roundabouts, swings and roundabouts. Our ancestors also understood that there was a lot of energy to be had from the different shapes of the stones that were placed into the earth of these sort of superconductors. And one would say that South America, which is covered with pyramids, these shapes are particularly good at conducting energy. And we have a lot of them throughout the world. However, we like also to have the needle shape 
on a standing stone. And this needle shape, which it goes down into the earth and transfers the magical energy through it, is reflected when Christianity took over this country. And they overtook a lot of pagan sites and built churches on them. In the UK, we have a great church steeple tradition. It is the epitome of the English countryside, the church with its steeple. And this steeple is a needle shape, is it not? And is not the church built upon, generally, some old pagan site, which is most likely a ley line intersection point. I spent a lot of time visiting stone circles, standing stones, ancient sites, because I'm very interested in it. And I don't necessarily notice that my watch will stop because I've got a quartz watch and it will be interfered with by the stone circle. Likewise, ley lines, as I said earlier, as they move around slightly, they're not static pathways. Some stone circles don't have the ley line near them anymore and therefore their power has gone. One of my favourite stone circles in Dartmoor is next door to the famous one Grey Weathers. And Grey Weathers stone circle I find has lost its energy, it's just depleted. Whereas the ones in the woods which you can't see, which aren't so impressive, are still really strong and you can feel the energy as you move into the circle. Fascinating stuff really. One thing I have noticed is that when I visit ley line crosses, if they are near you know, a Druid period settlement, then there tend to be a lot of earthbound spirits there. And there was this system where the Druids of a tribe, if they lived near a ley line cross, which they most likely did, the Druid would cast a spell that would last for the period of his lifetime. This spell meant that anybody in the tribe who died, their spirit was then tethered to the ley line intersection point. And they were kept there as a sort of guardian spirit to guard the tribe from bad jujus. I have found many intersections of ley lines where there is a group, so 20 or 30 people sometimes, who have been tethered to this spot and can't escape. And one of my jobs has been to help them do so. I know, little way out there. If you want me to go really way out, let me know, because quite frankly, that's just the tip of the iceberg. But it is interesting that the standing stones and the stone circles seem to be activated at certain times of the year. I don't know when these times of the year is. It presumably the people who built them, built them in tune with the moon and the stars and the sun and the earth. And so therefore, there'll be a time when those stones become even greater in their power conducting. Now, this has been proven, you know, scientific tests have been done. And at one point they were looking at the roll white stones, I think, and the roll white stones started emitting ultrasonic sound waves and electromagnetic power. So obviously there is something going on. We just don't know what it is. I reckon myself, having spent quite a lot of time with them, I think they were using these as magnifiers of this Earth's magnetic, magical power. And then whatever they wanted to do, be it, you know, have a good crop harvest, anoint a king, ensure that their tribe was the best tribe in the region, they would use these stone circles to perform their rites and get that magical power. I mean, that's what I presume they were doing. But who knows? As I said, ley lines are like rivers, so they, they do move and they do flow. I've got a Patreon um, supporter, and they have a portion of their bathroom, I think it is, which is catches a ley line as it moves through occasionally. But it's not there all the time, so weeks can go past and there'll be no ley line in her house. And then other weeks will come past and the, her house starts filling up with sort of, you know, the fae and um, spirits and all sorts of things, because that is what a ley line is. It is a sort of highway. It is a place where they can move across the land. And it's very difficult to block off a ley line because this is, you know, the Earth's power. It's a bit like moving a mountain. It's almost impossible to do. And so this poor Patreon of mine, she, she's, she, you know, she brings me up and says, I've got another one. And we find out that she's got some different form of fae or she's got some strange spirit who's come through or she's got some strange natural earth spirit. And I, they're part of the world and I can't keep them away for her. 
This would explain why many buildings which are on ley lines or ley line crosses have a lot of paranormal activity because there's a lot of action going on or passing through this house. You can protect against it. It's a bit difficult to keep everything out because of, well, you'd have to be a Patreon supporter for me to really go into the details of that because I can't do that over a 10 minute YouTube video. Well, I can't really show it, I think is the problem. Now, how do you know if you've got a ley line? Well, sadly, you have to be slightly either sensitive to these issues or are someone like myself who can douse for it. And that's how I feel them. I douse using my pendulum. You can use a ley line for your own benefits and purposes, although this is a magical earth energy. So you could have it for fertility, for example, is a good way to use a ley line. If you would like to learn a bit more about this, do go to patreon.com forward slash Ginny Metherill. This also has the added benefit of supporting this channel so I can continue doing these videos. Let me know in the comments below if you've got a ley line near you and what your experience of it is, if any. I would love to know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next week or in a few days, depending on how I get on.